Good morning. During these pandemic days, we thought we might share with you a few ideas about how you might create a few backyard gardens um, that you can eat as well. Please join us for a stroll through our edible gardens. One of our favorites is our fig tree. We share them readily with the birds every summer and they do great in our area. We started some transplants for the vegetable gardens. Um, we've got peppers, tomatoes, squash, cucumbers, melon, and Maximilian sunflower seeds for the birds. We have one rhubarb plant that comes back every year, which is a miracle in the south. In this part of the garden, we have four plum trees, seven goji berry bushes, an elderberry bush, and two Montmorency cherry trees, which are self-pollinating. We're allowing the vegetable garden to go fallow this year. It's covered with cardboard, hay, straw, leaves, and just compost. We'll see how the container gardening goes this summer. Another favorite are these primocane thornless blackberries. We've planted them all up and down the blueberry patch and they are prolific bearers. They do great in our area. And again, we use no sprays. It's all organic. We can come out here and just pick them right off the bush. Another berry very high in antioxidants is the black raspberry. We've started some uh, two years ago. We're letting them bramble and hope to see some more this summer. Hi, this big thing behind me is about four or five kiwi plants. They've been there about 10 years and I think we've gotten one kiwi off of it. This particular kiwi is meant to grow in the in this climate, but uh, we're still waiting for it to get mature. And uh, but it's been fun, and we're still hoping that this year will be our first harvest. Near our house is an older vegetable plot, in which we have a few things. One of which is some asparagus that we tend to neglect, and it goes to seed. We do have a bit left here in the midst of some wonderfully growing elephant garlic. Here are two apricot trees that we started from very small plants. These are the kind where you can eat the pit. They have immense anti-cancer properties and we hope to get some this year. We were blessed 26, seven years ago when we bought this property with the woman who had owned it before us having planted 40 blueberry bushes. They are now 30, some of them almost 30 years old. Some of them have been replanted recently and we've added a, a number of varieties. They say you're supposed to have at least three varieties to get good blueberries. Well, I think we have four or five. I can't tell you all of them because I don't remember. But the, the absolutely sweetest one we have on the property is this one right here. It's called a pink lemonade. And the berries are a little deceiving when they're growing because they are red when they're actually fully ripe where most of the blueberries are red about halfway ripe. And so, but those things are seriously some of the sweetest things you've ever eaten and just right off the bushes, we don't get too many to the house. Uh, behind me over here are some of that came up just as volunteers basically. And these are about two years old and they will actually start bearing fairly well in the next year. But uh, we try to keep it moving as to what's new and what's old, but we have a hard time giving up the old ones because they still bear very well. Along this fence that divides our property from the B&B, uh, we have some grapevines, five of them planted. Uh, Scuppernong, which is this one. Uh, we have a muscadine and three sunbelt grapes. This is our old faithful muscadine grapevine. It's been here between 30 and 35 years. It survived severe drought, freezes, being run over by the mower and demolished by a tree, but yet it keeps on bearing. Here I'm surrounded by three different varieties of pears. On my left is an Ayers pear. It's one of the younger trees in the, in the orchard. This is a Asian pear here on my right. And these are just a little bitty pears right now. And back here is the keeper pear. Uh, all different varieties, but the, the interpollination of them helps them grow and to produce really good fruit. Here we have three mulberry trees or bushes. Um, I think they're dwarf variety, but we'll see how they do. It'll be a while before we actually get mulberries as they take about 10 years to start producing. 
This pretty sort of purple leaf plant is a nectarine that has been here for a number of years. Uh, however, it's been run over at least twice by different tractor driving people, probably me, me mostly, and but has come back quite well. It has a lot of blossoms on it this year, but because we don't spray, nectarines don't do super well here, and we let the birds get those. In this part of the property, we have four apple trees planted, all different varieties to pollinate one another. And these are supposedly types that will do well in the south. This crab apple is absolutely beautiful, but we don't get a whole lot of fruit off of it, but it's been here about 15 years. Occasionally we'll get some small crab apples and that's because they are quite tart. These three very fledgling plants are pawpaws. We got them at a local natural farm called Crabtree Farm. There's three different varieties and it's gonna be about 10 years before we see any fruit off of these. But unless you grow pawpaws yourself, because they don't have much of a refrigeration life, uh, you don't really get them. So we're gonna see what this is like in a few years and hopefully we'll get a few before then. We've just added these native bee houses. They provide a place for native bees and butterflies up at the top. And you put them right next to the things that they would like to pollinate. The native bees pollinate, I think it's about three times more than the regular bumblebees or even the honeybees. So that's why we're gonna to try to attract them here. And we've seen a few this year already. This is our first attempt at container gardening. And already we've planted some tomato plants from Costco, a few pepper plants, and we have a little bit planted in the garden, some squash. We'll see how it goes. Thank you for taking time to stroll with us through our edible gardens. We hope we've given you some ideas of what you can do in your backyard. Have a great day. Thank you.